Hey, we just got, uh, sorry. Hey, we just got Jake's new bow set up and I noticed he was doing something that appeared god awful to me and we thought, why don't we do a video about making, uh, <laughs> how about we do a video about how to help Jake a little bit with his bow and how he's shooting. So we're going to do a baby bird number two. Make sure to stay to the end because we're going to fix a very common problem that a lot of you guys have that you might not even be aware of. Right there. Want me to shoot? Yeah, whenever you're comfortable. So Jake has what I would commonly refer to as a high risk that you don't see very often anymore. It's not a common way to shoot a bow. And it's not a common way to shoot a bow because it's very inconsistent over time. And what we're going to talk about is hand and wrist position. So pretend like you've got the bow. Just hold your arm. So how you have your hand, there's, there's not a lot wrong with what you're doing other than the fact that you're extruding your hand forward like that. So yes, you have less of the grip on your bow, but as you shoot, you fatigue. Okay, so this is going to go like that, and then 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 like that. And at the end of the day, you're down like this, and you can't figure out why you're hitting in a different spot. Yeah. Okay, so the ideal positions. Your shoulder position was fine. Your forearm position is fine. We need to take this grip that looks like this that you're starting with and make it look like it would be when you're tired to begin with. Okay. Okay, so full amount of pressure all the way through the grip. Now push forward. Come on. Okay, so if you relax your wrist, your hand won't actually move left to right like this. So the position that this is in, you can't really torque the bow because there's no pressure here, there's no pressure there. And as you fatigue and you get tired, we've basically taken all the muscle tension out of your hand. So as you shoot and as you shoot and as you shoot, it'll be the same. So let's try another shot here with this actually down like it is. Push your wrist down to where it touches. There you go. A little different? Different. Much better. Um, it feels a little more stable just to have like more meat. It would be drastically more stable, especially once you get used to it. But the other thing that we probably ought to focus on a little bit is what you're doing with these fingers. Because yep. they all pointed out you do this funky thing with your hands. So now, you do not want to touch the front of your riser. Yep. Because you're manipulating it. If, in, a, in a perfect world, you wouldn't hold on to it at all. You just let it do what it wants to do. Because that's duplicatable. When you start putting your own muscle tension into things, you create invariance. And as you do it time and time again, once again, you get tired. Your, ox your muscles have less oxygen in them. They get deprived a little bit. So the amount of pressure that you apply changes every time you touch it. So if we can eliminate any pressure in it whatsoever, that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to grab something else and teach you how to shoot without your fingers ever touching the front of the bow. So if you want to go grab those arrows, I'll grab a little toy. So this is my tool. Some wax? Yeah. You know, you'll, this is beeswax, which I always use for like hand tying, soft tying stuff or putting on uh, loops. But um, any wax usually comes in some kind of a tube, whether it's a roll of dimes, roll of quarters, etc. What I want you to do is hold this with your fingers and shoot your bow. And then you'll get a feeling you for what it's really like. Hand? I want that in your mother hand. While I shoot my bow. Okay. Yeah. So, and I'm going to actually sneak around to this side to make sure you're not manipulating. So what I want you to do is truly feel, feel what it's like to fire your bow without actually touching it, because you've been touching it the whole time. You've been sneaking your dirty little <laughs> fingers in there and playing with it a little bit and always looking. Eat them grubby little hands off. Once again, the less you touch it, the more consistent it'll shoot. Okay? okay. Ready? Yep. Don't fire it until I tell you. Just go and pull it back. All right, bring your fingers up here and grip that, like that. Okay, don't touch the riser, just hang on to the wax. The other side. Break your wrist down, homie. Mm. a kid, look at you. There you go. All right, and whenever you're comfortable, I know. Did you watch your bow when it went off? It just went boom. You know why it did that and it didn't do that before? Because you're not stopping it from doing it. By touching the front of it, you're stopping the bow's natural movement, thus, thus altering the, uh, the follow -through, natural follow-through of the bow. Okay. And then as you do that, if you do that differently, it will react differently every time you fire it. The less you touch that thing, the better off you are, period. 
like so, which is why a skinnier grip tends to shoot a little better. Yep. Right? Because there's less of your hand on the grip. So, now this might be a little wide for you, but like a set of dimes or something, or a small piece of wax. Mm -hmm. Something to stick in between your fingers to force you to hang on to that. Because in a perfect world, steal this from me for a sec. So, my hand grip looks like that. Okay, you're trying to bring it in kind of a little bit like this. Yeah. Flare your fingers out, right? Get that in the camera so you can see that. I can easily hold something over here and not touch the bow. Right? And when I fire it, the bow's still going to stay forward and go forward. But I shouldn't touch it. Okay. If I can not manipulate it, the better off it's going to be. And that's really what you need to focus on. Get that heel down to where you got a full grip. Not more pressure on the bottom than the top, but equal all the way through. And then put something in your fingers so you can't keep touching the front of the bow like you do. You won't notice it right away, but if you keep score over, say, a two-day event, you'll wonder why your scores keep going down as the day goes on the way you were shooting. Whereas if you start with your hand in the same position that you would have finished with, it was the same all day. It didn't change. Just a little bit of variance from touching that and just torquing your bow. Well, touching it and shooting from a higher wrist to the lower wrist, because you can't keep your wrist up all day long. Every time you pull it back, you're going to get a little more tired and your wrist is going to fall a little more and fall a little more. And that's putting a different amount of pressure in the hand, changing the pitch that the sight and the rest sit in yep. because you're constantly torquing it a little bit because we all torque. Yep. Torque doesn't mean you corkscrew the damn thing. Torque means you're applying pressure to the handle, period. And if your torque changes, it changes what it does. We just need to be able to do it the same. Even if it's wrong, it really doesn't matter as long as you can do it the same every time. Okay. You can reset up a bow for everything wrong if you can duplicate the wrong 100%. Grip down. There you go. There you go. Relax that thumb. There you go. And just let it do what it wants to do when you fire it. Don't manipulate it. So you immediately went and grabbed it with your hand. Makes now, me nervous. It, I understand. That. I understand. <laughs> and maybe a, maybe a wrist sling or a finger sling is something in your future. Yeah. So you if your if your worry is dropping the bow, okay. But if you're grabbing it when it goes off. You're sending a signal over here to fire. You're sending a signal over here to grab, and you can't convince me that that grab isn't reacting before your arrow's out of the bow, thus pitching the bow and changing where it's going to go. Yep. You have to have a clean follow-through to have consistency on every shot. Super important. Yeah, I'm going to have to really force myself to Thank do that with my hand. Thank you. Is there a good way, so like forcing my hand down like that, is there a good way for me to like Practice tell that? myself like I need to force my hand down like because I'm usually doing that and it just feels normal to me. Well, first hand. of all, you're actually doing like this. Okay. Right. It's literally all the way up like that. And that'll change my draw length. Yeah. Too, can right? you not feel when you're touching there? Because you're not before. Yeah. For you're me, it's down. like this side, like bottomed out. I can feel that. Mm -hmm. Like here to here, like I really have to force myself to do that. Well, I'd probably spend some time forcing yourself to do that. Yeah, and then I'll start working. So, do you have there. a do you have like a wall on your house that's like an exterior corner inside? All right, so go to a corner and push your hand against it. Okay. So you'll feel that definite line yep. directly against and push it equally on your whole hand. Okay. It'll, it'll emphasize down here, which will get you realizing that you need to feel it down there. You should feel the pressure of that going straight down through there. Like when you're done shooting, there's actually a line in your hand okay. from where that is. And you should be able to feel that and duplicate that up against a wall. So when we first started, I was more like this. Oh, yeah. And then I need to be like that. 100%. Okay. Equal full grip all the way through. Okay. And if you can, in a perfect world, if you can spend 10 extra arrows a day not thinking about aiming and just focusing on your grip would be how I would say you'd address the practice of that. So if you can steal five or 10 minutes out of your day and just shoot like 10 arrows at close distance, not focusing on aiming or anything like that, and just feel that grip in your lower part of your hand, yep. wouldn't even hurt to set up a phone or something on the side and record it and yep. look at it. Because okay. I guarantee you when you watch this video, it's drastically different and you can see it really easily. Um, and then fingers, like if I get a piece of black electrical tape, is that a bad idea? No, it's just not a bad it. idea, but if you had just something you had to hang on to, it forces you to do it. Yeah, okay. If you tape it around your fingers, you can still squeeze it with your hand. Gotcha. So the prescription to solve this problem is to shoot about 10 arrows a day without a target. Just stand up real nice and close and get the pressure going right down through here. Just as much pressure down here as there is up here. It should feel equal and hold on to something with your fingers while you fire those 10 arrows. Do that every day for two weeks, and you probably won't have to think about it ever again.